Hello and welcome to my tutorials. Uh, my name's Oli Killick. I run a small micro agency uh, specializing in packaging design and online visual merchandising, uh, pack shots in 3D. That's uh, how, I, how I earn the bulk of my crust. And um, I've decided to create this YouTube channel to kind of share what I've learned along the way with you guys. And hopefully, um, you know, you can get some value out of it as well. And it helps me as well because I can always refer back to stuff if I forget stuff when I'm working and things like that rather than hunting around the internet. So the first thing we're going to cover in Cinema 4D is the viewport because that's probably the most important thing to be proficient at. It's where you'll spend about 90% of your time actually interacting with the software apart from, you know, the things that you will do. But, you know, you, you, know, you need to be very proficient with the, with the viewport. So... First things first, we have four panels here. One is perspective, one is the top-down view, this is the right-hand side view, and this is the front view. So you have your plan, elevation, and end view, for those of you familiar with technical graphics terms, which I was forced to learn in secondary school, and now I'm glad I did. And I did enjoy it, to be fair. So, Navigating the viewport. First things first, I'm going to stick a cube and a sphere in here so that it's more obvious when I change views that, you know, we're looking at something from a different perspective because they're obviously they're different. So uh, to navigate the viewport, you just use this little hand icon here at the top. Um, you can use the keyboard shortcuts and I'll cover those just in a moment. But yeah, this one does the, uh, the pan, the zoom and the orbit, which is groovy. Uh, this one obviously changes each of the views to like occupy all the space that the previous four viewpoints or ports were occupying. And that's cool too. So the next thing you want to know about the, um, the interacting with the, the viewport is um, you have obviously your buttons here. And this is obviously the right, front and top. You can change these. Now, I won't piss around too much with the perspective view because that's that's pretty cool. So I'll do that in a moment. But right now, so if you want to have, say, the left-hand side view instead of the right, you can just go here under cameras. I mean, and you can change these viewports to anything you like. So you can have like two perspective views if you wanted. I mean, I don't know why you would want that, but you know, the options there, like like any good piece of software, you never know. Um, so I think this was like right or left, whatever, but I'll, I'll leave it left. Um, so that's cool. Uh, the next thing is um, there's obviously options for how you actually want to view your geometry under display. Uh, obviously, these have all got a display. You can do it again. You can do the same with all of the viewports. They've all got the option. Each viewport is kind of just its own generic shell. Uh, display. So we have garage shading with lines. That will show you the very evident geometry. And then you have quick shading, which is that. It's basically like garage shading, but just slightly less detailed. Uh, when you, you know, it's not obvious now because the geometry is so simple, but with more complicated scenes, it becomes more evident. Quick shading with lines, that's similar again. Um, and then we have constant shading, which just gives you a flat shape. Um, it's not particularly useful, that one, but it does become useful if you have like loads of higgledy-piggledy textures and you're kind of hunting around for your lines and your points. But this is much more useful here because then you obviously see where your points and lines are. You have the hidden line, which is this one, and that's kind of like, it's basically a wireframe, but you get it, it uses what's called back face culling, which is the back face gets culled, so you can't see it. So, um, and then just lines, which give you your traditional wireframe view of 3D. And so I tend to leave this set to garage shading. I'll, I'll, actually, to be fair, I do use the garage shading with lines quite a lot as well, because it's really useful uh, when, you're, when you're dicking around with points and models and stuff like that so so yeah um and let's have a look all right so at the moment my viewports are synced that's not the default setting so let us go into edit preferences and if we go to navigation sync orthographic views you want to have that checked because if it's not checked each view will move independently of the others which is fine you know if you want to have it like that you can have it like that but for me i much prefer because, you know, if you're zooming in on one, you probably want to be zoomed in on the other and not have the, you know, the, the gulf of execution between them where you're kind of like, oh, I'm here and then I have to go here to do something else, but I've got to go here first. It's just done for you. And I find it really useful. So that's, that's a handy thing to know. And um, 
other than that, I think that's pretty much it for the viewport. Um, there's obviously options here where you can have the different effects that you might have, like the post effects, so depth of field is one of them. That's a really handy one to turn on, actually, because it helps you calibrate your cameras when you have depth of field turned on. I'm not going to cover that now because it's a different subject for, for another time. But uh, for instance, I've got, um, let me just go to my, my layout. I'll show you how to customize your layout as well after the perspective or after this view, because this is, this is the one you want to learn first. Um, but, you know, right here, I've got a, a render brewing away. that has been going for the last 21 hours and 56 minutes and 47 seconds. And yeah, you can see there's a bit of depth of field there. It's just something I'm rendering for a client. But um, I want to do stuff like this in the future. I'll, I'll, I'll share it with you guys because um, it's ever so much fun to kind of do it and then share it. So yeah, um, and that's it for the for the viewport. Um, I would recommend just getting your hands stuck in for like half an hour or so. Stick a few objects in there as well. Here's your objects. That's the standard one, but you can move this around. Um, and you know, and, and just see see what you can do. Uh, it's it's just familiarize yourself. Um, and lastly, we'll just cover the keyboard shortcuts. Um, so, uh, if I can remember, and it, my, my hand remembers, but I'm actually looking at my keyboard, so it's confusing. So, um, so your E, oh, which one is which? No, hang on a second. Oh yeah, no, sorry, sorry. Okay, leave it there. So the, the keyboard, right? The, the number one on the keyboard gives you your pen. Number two gives you your zoom. You have to hold it and click. And number three, gives you your orbit. Um, number four doesn't seem to do anything. Uh, so one, two, and three on the keyboard, yeah? Um, and that will give you, that's what I use all the time, because when you're, when you're, you don't really want to be dicking around with, with these all the time, because it's, it's kind of, it's, it's too much like amateur error, isn't it? You want to know the keyboard shortcuts, because that's, that's, that's how your workflow is going to go. That's what you want. Um, also, you know, if you click on a object, it will naturally orbit around that object. You can see here, that's where you can set, you can, you can change that in settings, but this is a default setting, which I tend to stick to. Um, edit preferences. Uh, yeah, like the, I don't know why they haven't put this underneath the, the viewport. Um, yeah, that's kind of weird, but you know, that's where I would put it. But anyway, um, so yeah, you have your, your, um, uh, where are we gone? Yeah, bitch. Outlines, wireframe, system. No, maybe that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe it's here. Maybe it's here. Navigation. Oh yeah. Oh, hang on. Reverse orbit trackball. Where the fuck's that from? Camera mode. Oh yeah. Camera mode. Okay. Cool. There we go. Camera mode. So if we change camera mode to cursor, it'll just rotate around the cursor. Okay. And if we change camera mode to center, it'll just go around the center. You know, you'll, there's your center. There's your little cross, and that's that's one thing you can do there. Uh, obviously, the object mode is the default one, which is what I tend to prefer. And then you have the camera one, which will s that you know, it's it's rotating from the camera. It's it's fucking yeah yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's the object mode. It's it helps. and if you want to override the object mode for any reason, say you want to orbit around the, the corner of this cube, if you hold kind of I think it's the function key and the left arrow. Yeah, on the Mac, I work on a Mac. I have to just make that disclaimer now. I work on a Mac, but on the Mac, it's the function key on this mini little Apple keyboard. I got it's got a little. Um, it's the emoji key as well, uh, but it's the FN one bottom left, and then that will let you rotate around. I mean, you know, so it's not it's not dead accurate because um, you know it's three D space and it, it doesn't know where the Z you want it to be. But you can probably you zoom in on it and say like you know if I wanted to dick around with this cube, there you go. I've got the corner of it um, highlighted, and if I want to unhighlight it, I just press function and the left arrow again, and it, it's that's actually really useful. I discovered that by accident. So, um, so yeah, that should get you covered pretty well for interacting with Cinema 4D and the perspective. It's, it's worth learning all of these things because they're ever so useful. And, uh, you know, just, just rewind the video, look at it again, um, have a little play around, and um, I will catch you next time for the next video. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do, but it'll probably be something to do with setting your scene up. I think for the next video, I will cover sorting out your... your, your, your setting up your, your, your workflow so that you have it's set up the way you want it because that would make sense, wouldn't it? So um, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to drop a like and a subscribe and um, and leave a comment below. If, you, if there's any videos you want to request, you know, I cover Photoshop, Illustrator, um, not After Effects because uh, uh, animation is a bit tedious. I use the animation tools in Cinema 40, the MoGraph tools, they're excellent, but I don't use them for animation. For instance, this one, I didn't obviously sit there and place every one of those gummies by hand. I just 
told Cinema 4D to dump a shitload of gummies on the floor and spread them out. It uses a little built-in physics engine. Um, this is the later version of Cinema 4D. It um, has two physics engines built in, but and this is the older one I use for this, but we'll cover that in a different video anyway. So um, it's been great to make this tutorial, and like I said, yeah, feel free to interact, comment below, see, see how it goes, and I wish you all the best of luck with your 3D journey, and um, hopefully I'll catch you next time.